just say no. One of the smallest words, and yet one of the hardest words I have to say. I'll admit in giving this talk today, and telling my friends what the topic was, they laughed at the irony. They said, that's hilarious, Malski, because you can't say no. And I'll admit, at first, my feelings were kind of hurt, because your friends are supposed to believe in you. But they already knew the secret that wasn't so secret, which was that I can't say no. I don't want to say no to possibilities or professional opportunities, but I know that I'm also tired. I'm feeling exhausted, that I'm eating stress for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so I realized, if we take this narrative back a couple of years, that there were murmurs, small murmurs, that were tugging at my sleeve, telling me that it was time to slow down. But there was no time to slow down. About two years ago, I found myself at the height of busy. Busy looked like any other year, really, for me, which was, in essence, changing jobs. I was changing a job that I absolutely loved, but I was moving on to a new adventure of teaching teachers, which is, of course, another passion of mine. But I was also finishing my master's degree, and for good measure, of course, just to stay at the height of busy, I thought I would also plan and get married that summer. So busy was what I was. And yet, there was no other word to replace busy. And this is what happened even into the years following. Now that I find myself occupied with my doctoral work and the work that I'm currently doing as an instructional coach, busy is just busy. People would ask me, Kath, how's work going? I'd say, busy. How's work and school and life going? It's busy. And there was no other word to replace it. So I did what I thought would be the best thing to do. I'll just replace the word. If I shift the paradigm of busy just by simply replacing it, then busy doesn't exist anymore. So I would be asked again, how is life? Busy. How's work? How's school? Busy. There was no way to get rid of this word. It was an absolute curse. I had somehow glorified busy, and yet, I knew in my heart that I was tired of the metaphorical cafeteria line of taking second helpings of stress, exhaustion, with no side of chill. So I did the next best thing. I thought, you know, as a good multitasker, I would start some calendar reminders for myself on my phone. So this is from my own phone. I thought, okay, if I need to write every day, I'll write every day. And so ding, 9 a.m., this would pop up. And I was ready, but I didn't write. And then this spilled in, of course, into my exercise, which also didn't happen. (laughs) True story. True story. (sighs) Right? And so this was realistically what would pop up on my phone every morning. And for those of us that lived in the era when the phone was on the wall, the cord reached into the living room, we had a nice satisfaction of when we saw something or heard something we didn't want, we could just have that satisfaction of slamming it down. But with, obviously, these flat smartphones, this doesn't cut it anymore. And so this spilt in even further, and I didn't really realize how far down the rabbit hole I was until my last dentist appointment. And that's that's really when it struck me. (laughs) That if I was going to have to remind myself of some of the absolutely daily things, this needed to change. But I wasn't ready. I didn't want to change. I was getting used to the glorification of busy, and I felt as though I could manage it. But there were other murmurs. There were things in my life, illness. I was getting sick all the time. I was getting tired of being sick and tired. And so I also realized, as the tugs on the sleeve came by, that I was losing connection with friends, family, loved ones. I missed out on time with these people. And I wanted to become a better friend, colleague, wife, daughter. And so when I knew that I was losing connection, I wanted to try and regain this back. But I didn't know where to start. I was still really frustrated with this whole busy paradigm. I needed courage. Courage to me means that I'm going to go and do something that absolutely scares me. Case in point with you today. However, I didn't have the courage yet, but I knew that I was going to have to do something that scared me, which was saying no. But in saying no, I was still scared because I felt like I was going to lose out. 
Saying no meant that I was gonna lose out on opportunities. I had prided myself on my work ethic, on how far I had gotten so far, that I didn't want to stop. But other things were telling me that I needed to. And so here I stood, at a personal crossroads. On one hand, I was a self-identified workaholic, and to a certain degree, I still am. I'm not perfect. Isn't that the point? And on the other hand, I had all this personal freedom that I had loved. I was missing out on passions of volunteering or just spending more time with friends and being present in that moment without having to think about other things that were going to happen that day. And so, even though I was upset that I had let my busy dictate my happy, I knew that I needed to make changes. And so I started. For any of you that resona this resonates to you right now, we all know that some of the sweetest victories start small. And so I did. The first thing that I brought back was exercise. Now, exercise and I, we've known each other for a really long time. We've gone out for coffee several times. We know each other's Facebook profiles. We've creeped each other, we know. And yet, it was time to define the relationship. And so I'm happy to tell you today as I stand here, we're going steady. Yeah. And so what that means for me is that in essence, we don't see each other every day, but we're at least making time for each other. And that's what counts. Because with exercise came more creativity, which then spilled back into my professional life. I mean, I, I love exercising because there was clarity of mind. More car ride manifestos. I was singing in the car again. I didn't sing when I was stressed out. You know, the private space with the four to six windows. Either way, I was bringing that back. And that was making me happy and more productive, but also felt like I was gaining some wellness in my life. Another thing I started doing was writing my narratives. This, of course, tiered into some of my doctoral work currently, but I was writing about my life, about my adolescence, but also learnings that I was having, not only as a teacher, educator, but also just as a daughter or wife. And these writings brought me so much joy. And so I kept this to myself. However, the writing certainly opened up new windows for me. Another thing I did was I started keeping a journal of gratitude. Not a lot of writing, simply writing one thing down every day that brought me joy or that I was absolutely grateful for. And in doing this, I felt as though I was able to ground myself. I was able to see what was more important. If we looked at this at a metaphoric beach of life, we'd be able to look at the landscapes, the larger pieces, rather than always focusing on the background noise or the tiny granules of sand that were in between my toes. This all helped me, and I started to feel like I was gaining some ground in the wellness area. And yet, FOMO was still there. The fear of missing out is still something that tugs at me. It's the obligations, it's the stress, it's these other pieces, they're the murmurs, these things that don't necessarily roar at you, but they say, hey, you need to be here, or you need to, need to, need to. And so I wanted to try and calm those down as much as I could with regaining some of my wellness. And so I dug in just a little bit deeper. I took a little bit of a technological sabbatical. I know that sounds harsh, but it's not. It doesn't mean that I'm not still keeping up with my dog's Facebook or Instagram account. It just means that I've taken some time to be mindful of when I'm on my devices, how often I'm spending time in front of a computer screen, when am I checking email, I'm not checking email anymore past six o'clock. I've made some rules and boundaries for myself, but they don't always work for everyone, which is why I introduced to you Molsky tasking, because that's the personalized piece. It's what brings back the idea that you, you as yourselves will find ways to be productive, but also to attend to the wellness that is the most important piece work for you as an individual. I can't say that I do it all the time. I can't say that I don't say no all the time. I do say yes, but I also say no when I know that I need to safeguard what is the most important thing to me sometimes, my health. And so, I encourage you all to have the courage to look inward, to self-reflect, to look upon your lives and see where it is that you need to maybe make some changes or things are going just great. Wellness 
is something that we all can have, but it's not necessarily something that we all can attend to at the same time or in the same way. It is such a beautiful struggle to look at what it is that you need to change. It's also a beautiful privilege to be able to look inward, to self-reflect, to know that you can make changes. It's such a beautiful privilege to be able to walk with oneself with authenticity. Thank you.